I'm going to do a video that has been on my to-do list for about five years, maybe even six years now at this point. And that is how I make large holes, anything above an inch typically, using this drill press and this little fancy jig here. And currently I'm using an overpriced boring bar. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of how I do this. And then I'll go through the details of everything a little bit better if you want to know more about that. This little table, I guess we can call it, is actually an old plow part. I stuck a one inch ball bearing in. We'll get into more details about that in a second. Uh, the bearing just keeps this boring bar. That is a commercially available boring bar. From wandering side to side, it takes a lot of pressure off of the spindle. I made a little extension for it. That way, as you can see, the bearing takes most of the load and it takes a lot of pressure off the spindle that way. This boring bar did come with an extension, but I find it way too long. It hits the drill press table, even with this little, I guess we'll call it a fixture, so we can differentiate between the drill press table and this fixture. Uh, but yeah, it, it hits before I get done drilling the hole, even being this far up off the table. So I never use it. I just simply get the table lined up, locked down, with the boring bar in there, so that way I know I'm on the bearing correctly. And I take this thing out. We'll clamp down my piece of metal. Now with this piece of metal on here, I can't get my nice bit to slide up in there. I can barely even get it when the metal's not on there. It hits the fixture. If I get it just right, it'll go. So I can't use this one. That's why when I set this boring bar in here and get the table height set right, I run it all the way down with the quill stop. And uh, yeah, as you can see, I still don't have enough room to use a good Morris taper drill bit. So what I've been doing is using a half inch end mill holder with a half inch shank drill bit, put it in there, and that's working pretty good. Give me plenty of clearance that way. Let's get this centered and clamped down. I'm gonna get myself a good set of toe clamps and whatnot. I don't know why I never do it. But to clamp stuff down, I just have a whole selection of strap iron, angle iron, bits and bobs that I use uh, to clamp things down. This one I usually use clear across the thing like that. And then I usually and I just use another piece of strap iron with a spacer depending on you know thickness of the metal. There's a toe clamp over there and I run them down with the air ratchet. Pop that out of there. And yeah, this bit's a little dull. I used it a bunch on rebuilding a sweet plow. And I haven't sharpened it since then. And we'll switch to the boring bar. And the reason it has this extension on here is can't get it in there without taking off the extension. And when I have a lot of holes to drill, that gets very old and tiring. One little trick I'll go ahead and stick in the video right now is to seat this thing in here properly. I just have a little piece of strap iron lay on there. Push down on it. Now the thing's seated good. Okay. And we'll give her a liberal coat of oil. That way it'll slide through that bearing pretty good. Uh, 
That's only been a few seconds and we're halfway through this piece already. There we go. Pull through that three quarter inch metal pretty darn quick. All right, let's look at the table, get a few more details of that. And I'll give you some details of how I adjust the depth of that bit and also a little more details of how this boring bar is built. Okay, let's switch to shaky cam here. Give you a good look at the table. I just drilled a bunch of holes in the top of it so I could put in bolts wherever I need. I did try slotting it, but that was a complete disaster. Uh, so I just discovered that doing a whole bunch of holes was good enough because these bolts actually don't need to slide. Um, there's a bigger than an inch hole. I think it's like an inch and a sixteenth is what I drilled through there. And then the bigger rings are just where I crash into it. Uh, you know, as I've used it over the years. This piece is actually off of a plow. I don't remember what it did. I think it's a hydraulic cylinder mount for the lift on a disc if I remember right. But it doesn't really matter. It's some piece of junk I had laying around. I put spacers on each side so I could get rid of the chips under here. It also has another hole in there. That way the boring bar can come through and actually hit the table. Because when I first started doing this, I was using that long extension and I needed all the travel I could get. Uh, with that short extension, that hole's not even necessary. And actually that hole is almost a hindrance now because the chips fall in it and pile up underneath the table here. So, I don't like that at all. Uh, I did a lot of careful measuring and put this thing in the press and, you know, pressed it down and then welded the strap iron here because this piece wants to flex in and out like this a lot. It just has a piece of half inch plate back here um, that holds these two together and that was not near enough. I When I first started using it, I didn't have these in there. And man, this piece would go up and down so much. I think it's really close to level. However, I dream of putting a fly cutter in the drill press and then taking the table and swinging it around and skimming that off to where it really is true. Because there's been a few times that I've thought that maybe this table leans to the back just a little bit yet. Oh yeah, the bearing. Just a simple two flange pillow block bearing. Mounted in there. Nothing fancy about it at all. Um, I tried to get it just as close to this plate up here as possible. That way it'll catch that boring bar better. In hindsight, I'm almost wondering if I should have dropped that down maybe a half an inch so chips would get out of there a little bit better. But I honestly don't know if that would help or not. Uh, let's see, then just two holes down to the T-slots on the table. Nothing really fancy there. This is the boring bar that I use. I, in my opinion, this thing is way overpriced. I'm not endorsed by them. This is just something my grandpa got back in the 80s. So, uh, it's pretty handy. Um, if anybody out there is a machinist, you could make one of these yourself really, really quick because all it is is a Morris Taper 3 with a 1 inch shank and a square bit stuck in it. So this is just a regular old bit in here in the boring bar. Two set screws. I'm not sure it needs both of them. They're 180 degrees apart from each other and I think sometimes one pushes on the other. So it is sharpened like this. So that cuts along this edge right here as it comes around like this. There is a selection of these that came with the kit and there's even a collar. So what you do is you can drill up to two inches in your first pass if you set this all the way out. Then you can switch to a longer bit, put on this collar, and then you can drill up to three inches with it. This collar is two inches in outside diameter, so it'll ride in that two inch hole, which keeps the boring bar from, you know, 
walking around so much. The kit does come with this basically useless uh, adjuster. It's got all the numbers written here, you know, your measurements, so you can adjust it in and out. But that's obviously not very accurate. Plus, there's a lot of slop on the boring bar, especially as this thing wears over the years. Uh, so what I usually do is get out my digital calipers and uh, measure it like this. Obviously, it's not going to be a direct reading. I have to do a little bit of math, figure out where I'm at. And then I take a bolt with a self-locking nut on it, and I stick it in the hole. That way I can change this nut just a little bit on the threads and push this bit in or out. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So if I wanted this to be a little bit longer, you know, I'd put the nut on a little bit more. And then when I pushed it back in that hole, it'd push this out just slightly, slightly bigger. That gives me really good control of it. Let's see, I'm actually going to tighten this back up before I take it out. I really do wish this was just an inch longer from here to here. Instead of being there at three, I really wish it was, well, actually right there at the end of the boring bar. Um, so I'm really considering making myself another boring bar that this was an inch down because that would allow me to change to my nice big Morris Taper 3 drill bit in here while a piece of metal was in there. Um, so, yeah, like I said, nothing complicated about this boring bar. There's a hole in it here, if you notice that. Um, they also send along this little rod, which is really handy. So if you need to turn it to where you can get to it to adjust it or, you know, check for clearance before you start drilling, that kind of thing, it's really handy. Uh, son of a diddly do. I think it escaped injury. Uh -huh. um, also, I put a hole in the extension I made. That way I could stick another rod in there because every once in a while this extension will screw itself on so tight. That I couldn't get it off. So another hole in there. I'm going to use two rods and loosen that up. Thanks for watching y'all. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comments below and maybe I'll accidentally get a notification and answer you.